Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. I'm in, uh, still in Canada. Hoping my connection is strong enough here because I've only got one bar with AT&T. So I will find out, I guess, if it is or not. Um, I'll wait for some people to pop on here. Behind me is the United States across the water here. Okay, I'm back now. Hello, guys. I'm uh, trying to get a good signal. I'm uh, actually at Niagara on the Lake. Behind me is the United States, and I'm actually in Canada. And it is really cold. It's not like it was in Texas. It's like, uh, I don't know, 38 degrees with a wind chill of probably, I don't know, zero, it feels like. But anyway, hello David from uh, San Antonio. Hello Tina Marie from uh, College Station. My right hand is freezing right now. Hello Sevilla. So behind me, you can see the United States. I can wave over there, uh, but, hello Ashley. But, uh, it would be a long cold swim. All right, don't remind me that it's gonna be in the 80s today, Tina. But it's not here, it's freezing. But I didn't get to feel winter this year, so I'm kind of relicking a little bit of coldness. In fact, I'll share this with everybody. They have a warning out for tonight and tomorrow morning with 100 kilometer winds. That equates to about, I think, maybe 80 mile an hour winds for the United States. So 100 kilometers per hour are the winds predicted tonight. There's a cold front coming in from like Colorado. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get my dose of uh, what it feels like to be in uh, cold weather. So you're in very hot Pakistan. Well, boy, Imran, if you were over here, you would be in very freezing cold um, Canada. So now I'm hoping I don't lose the signal <laughs> because uh, it is really chilly. Uh, but I got a good topic today and we're talking about, the Lord wants me to talk about you know, what, why do you do what you do? And um, a lot of us don't think about that. It's warm, 70, what, in Indiana? It can't be 70 in Indiana, Sevilla. Prove it, I want to see proof. My hands are freezing, I'm not that far from Indiana. Hello, Kalini, from Washington, the state of Washington. Great to see people from around the world that are joining. Anyway, um, it feels like winter here. So across my shoulder is the United States. I am standing on Niagara on the lake at a park called Queen, uh, Queen's Park or something like that. And what I want me to talk about today is why do you do what you do? Um, a lot of us don't think about that. Now, why am I doing what I'm doing right now instead of selling software to banks? You know, I used to sell software to banks. I used to make a lot of money doing that, but had a son that essentially got molested, and that was a mess. Went through that for 10 years. The Lord had me re remarry a second wife who had, uh, you know, extreme. Sorry about that, guys. The connection here has got one bar, so I can't control it. Um, so anyway, why do we do what we do? You know, I do what I do because of what I went through. And, uh, you know, my second wife had some strong, uh, wounds from her father and mother because they didn't have good fathers when they grew up and so it just got passed on down the bloodline and so I had to take a lot of that stuff. But when I came out of that, I started hearing the Lord really clearly and he started telling me he wanted me to help others to get set free and to pay attention to their thoughts. Now, a lot of people don't think about their thoughts. A lot of times they tell you in church, take every thought captive, but they don't really tell you how to. Now I'll tell you how, Harvard, if you, uh, have any legal rights that the enemy has to speak to you, you're gonna hear his voice loudly in your head telling you to do things that are gonna hurt you. And so we have always talked about the Jezebel Leviathan spirits, also Ahab spirits causing us to do things we shouldn't be doing. Once we've gotten freed from that, then we can uh, discern when the voice of the enemy tries to come on us and try to whisper us to, to do things. But so many of us don't take the thoughts captive. You know, how I do it is if I hear the voice of the enemy trying to whisper to Sorry, I'm so sorry I can't be taller and get to the top of those trees where I'm sure they have a better signal. 
Anyway, I have to be brief, I think, on this. So, essentially, we need to pay attention to the thoughts we get throughout the day. Anytime you get a thought that's from the enemy, it's going to cause you to be angry or to be selfish or to be jealous. You need to take that thought captive. You need to basically shut it down. Say, I silence the voice of the enemy. And then redirect your thoughts on something that is true, noble, just, lovely, pure, a good report. Something of that nature. You know, I will never argue and strive with anyone. If they try to get in an argument with me, I may have to hang up. I may have to say, I gotta go. I may have to walk away. But it's ridiculous for a Christian to ever strive with anybody. And uh, if you are striving, then you've got the enemy on you and it's causing you to do that. You know, it's ridiculous. You know, Jesus didn't strive with anybody except for the Pharisees. Of course, the Pharisees had Jezebel with them, so he didn't like them too well. You know, it's really hard uh, when a person's got a spirit on them that's trying to pull you into fighting and arguing. Wow, there's like a big bird up there. See? He just landed. I don't think it's a dove, though. I'm not, not hearing too many doves up here. I think it's too cold. It's probably like a big crow or something up there. Anyway, we need to take our thoughts captive. We need to know why we do what we do. And it really goes back to oftentimes when you grew up, how your mom, how your dad treated you, and the voices that you heard thereafter. And uh, the voices can cause you to be fearful, it can cause you to be angry, it can cause you to do all kinds of things that aren't you. And when you start discerning and you start thinking about why am I having these thoughts, why am I behaving this way, why don't I you know, do this, why do I eat this food, why do I run, you know, 26.2 miles. You know, I used to run marathons because I was in fear that I would get a heart attack like my mom and dad did. But I finally learned that I was doing that out of fear, that it wasn't healthy. You know, today I did, uh, what was it, four point some miles on the treadmill at a 15% incline. Why did I do that? Because I wanted it to do something challenging, but it wasn't going to kill me. You know, it was something that was fun for me to do. I mean, maybe other people aren't enjoying that, but... I like to be challenged, but I'm not doing things out of uh, fear anymore. I'm doing things because I want to do them. You know, if I'm talking to a certain person, you know, oftentimes I want to talk to them. Sometimes I have to talk to people I don't want to talk to, you know, people that have Jezebel Leviathan. You know, I have to be very loving and gentle and sweet and kind and uh, for them to receive it. But um, what's exciting is that people up here in uh, Canada now are catching, catching the wave. There's waves behind me here. Uh, catching the wave of uh, what the Lord's revealed to me and now it's working here. Can you believe it? It works in Canada. People are getting delivered. I'm uh, having uh, reports coming in from people that uh, were around me this weekend saying, oh my gosh, I'm sleeping through the night now. I'm not having nightmares. Oh my gosh, my face got healed. I don't have pain anymore. My children got delivered. Now my children, you know, don't have chatter anymore. I've heard that on a couple occasions now. Um, whether they're you know six-year-old or eight-year-old, ten-year-olds are not hearing the enemy's voice anymore. How great is that? And then I just found out that tomorrow night I'm speaking. I thought it was at a private home. Apparently, it's at a university now, which is awesome. Um, it's in uh, Saint Catharines. You can find it on my Facebook page, the exact place. But it's at 50 Niagara Street, and. Uh, it's going to be packed. There's people coming all over the place now because they just heard about this like in the last, I don't know, 24 hours, 36 hours. So they're pumped about it. They're excited because there's going to be more pastors that are coming and uh, more people are talking about this now. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen Wednesday night because that wasn't even planned. It wasn't even on the schedule until Saturday night. So how cool is that? So anyway, people are now starting to realize that what the Lord's revealed is true. When we are thinking thoughts that aren't our own, then uh, oftentimes they're the enemy, and the enemy causes us to get into fear and anger and get mean, and it drives us to do what we do. And we need to pay attention to that. Like right now, my fingers are like frozen to like this. <laughs> it's like, huh, it is so cold. Oh well, I'm sure when I get down to Texas in April, it'll be like 120 down there, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I wish I was up in Canada again. So nice and cool up there. But just think, there's people that are in bondage that are not in freedom, and they don't know this truth. And a good example of that, like say it's over here in the United States, right over there is in the United States. 
you know, and say that, uh, in fact, it used to be that the slaves would have to come to Canada to get free. And uh, oftentimes they would like get in boats or try to swim across the water to get into Canada. So here I am now, I'm in Canada, I'm in freedom. Yay, freedom. And there's still, you know, the symbol symbolism of that is, you know, I'm free now because I don't have Jezebel, I don't have Leviathan, I don't have Ahab, lots of other people are coming to the island, the island of Canada, whatever, and getting freed. And now we're trying to pull the other people that are on the other side, that are in church, that are in bondage, that are in religion, that are doing things out of the voices that bring from the enemy. We're trying to get them set free so they can cross over, come to the other side into freedom and to get away from the Jezebel Island. Remember I've talked about, gee, wouldn't it be nice if we could put all the Jezebels on the Jezebel Island until they finally realize that uh, they're the ones that need to get set free and delivered? Then they can come over to the Freedom Island, the Restored to Freedom Island. So how funny is that? But yeah, there's a place here in, uh, uh, I guess I was over there in New York, um, I don't know, back in August, they said that the slaves uh, essentially to get freedom would come across um, the water into Canada and they were officially free. And they actually have a huge uh, placard with uh, um, some statues there showing um, this crossover place. You know, they, they truly got free when they came into Canada. So how cool is that? Because what would happen is a lot of the slave owners would try to come up north and to recapture them and take them back. Well, they couldn't do that once they were on Canadian territory. So, think about the thoughts you have throughout the day. If the thoughts that you're having are causing you to be into fear, anger, uh, sexual perverseness, um, you know, pornography, um, drawing to people that are ungodly and impure, then you're hearing the voice of the enemy. So you need to discern that and shut him down and rethink, get your thoughts plugged into the things that are good and true and noble and just and pure and righteous. And when you do that, then uh, you will do things differently. Because how, how, you know, why do you do what you do? Well, it always starts with a thought. You know, why am I doing what I'm doing? I never had a thought of doing this back in 2008. You know, in 2008, I had just gone through a divorce in June. I was in devastation. I was sad. I was depressed and uh, hopeless. And my children were becoming, you know, farther away from the Lord. And then I started hearing the Lord and went to a conference in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. I had some people prophesy over me. All of a sudden, the thoughts came in from the Lord saying, hey, Nelson, I want you to do a worldwide ministry. I want you to lead people all over the world to be set free from spirits, from demonic spirits, you know? And I didn't know it was Jezebel Leviathan and didn't have a clue until uh, I separated from my wife in 2015 to get away from the torment and the constant uh, abuse. And when I did that, the Lord started speaking to me even more and saying, guess what? This is what was wrong. You know, she had Jezebel Leviathan. Now you're going to have an anointing over that. Now I'm going to have you come and speak about this all over the world and people are going to get set free. And so I had to listen to the voice of the Lord. If I would have listened to the enemy, he would have said, oh my gosh, your life's miserable. You lost your job. You're not making 200000 a year anymore. You're hopeless. You know, you don't have a wife. Everything is going to be bad. You might as well die. You know, all that stuff's the enemy. And if I could have, if I would have focused on the enemy and negative stuff, then I would never be here today doing what I'm doing. I would never, ever know how to get people set free. You know, I would have uh, listened to the enemy all day long. I would have been, you know, in poverty and uh, hopelessness and uh, who knows where. So anyway, it's amazing to watch. There's people all over the world now that are messaging me more and more every single day saying, oh my gosh, you know, I read the prayers, I got delivered, you know, I yawned, I don't hear the voice of the enemy anymore, I'm sipping through the nights, I got healed of this and that, and uh, now my wife and I get along, we don't fight anymore, we don't argue anymore. You know, this is real, this is real. We all hear voices in our head and it drives us to do what we do. So, um, anyway, I'm excited, so um, let me share uh, this, see, tomorrow night, I will be in St. Catharines, uh, Ontario, which is just north of Niagara Falls, and uh, speaking at a university where they have a group of people come together that are very prophetic, and I'm gonna be their guest speaker. And this all came about as of Saturday night, so that's really cool. Uh, it's at 7 uh, p.m. They're having a potluck dinner at 6 p.m. if you come early. And um, it's 
called Test C, I think it is, Test C, something like that. Anyway, it's on my Facebook page, it's going to be on my website, um, the exact how to get there. And then uh, this weekend I'll be in Elmer, A-Y-L-M-E-R, Ontario. It's about two hours, two and a half hours west of Niagara Falls, still in Canada. April 15th I'll be in Sandusky, Ohio. April 20th through 22nd I'll be in San Angelo, Texas, where it'll be a lot warmer than I am now. And I just got confirmed this morning I'm coming to College Station, uh, Texas, on April the 26th on a Thursday night. My good friend uh, Roy is uh, having me come there to a group, uh, so I'm excited about that. And then, let's see, May the 4th and 5th I'll be in San Antonio. May the 6th, I'll be doing a training, teaching of the certified members of Restorative Freedom. By the way, we've got our first uh, woman from Australia now, and she's getting more and more people every day that are coming to her that want to get set free and delivered. Um, I've got my first person from South Africa that's getting certified now. Um, what else is happening? Uh, May the 18th, 19th, I'll be in Houston, Texas. So I'll be in Texas for probably another four or five weeks. I uh, practically live there. Uh, let's see, do I have an audio book? Yes, I do, April, ding, 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 ding. All my books are available in Audible. Just go out to either audible.com or Amazon. They're only available in English, but uh, I've got all my books, thanks to Tina, there's no errors in any of them. No more snaps, because uh, I forgot to make some uh, tweaks to them. So anyway, they're all perfect now. Oh my gosh, look at that, there's horse horse-drawn buggy. I wonder if they have Amish here or something. I don't know. I don't know if you can see that or not. Reminds me of like uh, Elkhart, Indiana. Uh, so anyway, yes, they're all available on Audible. So um, I'm the one that reads them too. So uh, Restored to Freedom is the name of that book that has uh, the Leviathan stuff in it and Jezebel. But Restored to Freedom is available on Audible. You can download it. You can get it instantly. So, so yay, English. You know, I do have Restored to Freedom in German, uh, but that's not in uh, Audible. It's in uh, paperback and Kindle. Also have it in Spanish. Um, gotta change my hands here so I can unfreeze now my <laughs> left hand and go to my right. Um, so anyway, things are happening. Things are happening all over the world. And it's growing, We're getting more and more people every week that are being certified. The team is growing out, it is uh, getting exciting to watch. And um, again, being in freedom from your thoughts, being tormented from the enemy is a great thing. As I look at the United States behind me, so that's the U.S. over there, right there. Just think, I could like jump in the water, start swimming get across there and I'd be in the United States but then I'd have to come all the way back and that'd be really cold I don't think that I would make it in the water I think it's too cold and that is uh, Ontario Lake Ontario out there and then Toronto is like on the other side over there so I got to go to Toronto on Sunday got to go to the Toronto blessing to catch the fire church awesome uh, senior leaders there got to meet Sandra Long and uh, great group of people there. It was fun. Enjoyed it. And um, I will be back in the States April the 15th. So I'll be up here for another couple weeks. And God is on the move in Canada. It's exciting. I can't wait to come back and uh, maybe spend a uh, month when it's a little warmer. It'd be nice to be up here in the summertime. And I know it's going to be beautiful then. So anyway, um, yes, I don't have gloves. Sorry about that. Um, I guess I grew up on a farm. Farmers don't eat gloves, so. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, um, maybe I'll walk down here, let you see. There's some people coming here, so hopefully they won't uh, impinge upon my time. But I'll walk down here, as long as I can stay and keep my connection going, and get you down here by the waves. You can catch the waves. Just uh, so exciting though, seeing people getting set free all over the place. Because the Lord told me when I started seeing people in Indianapolis getting delivered, He said it'd be a small microcosm of the rest of the world. 
and the rest of the world would eventually follow. So here we go. Look at that. I think that white stuff is snow. By golly, it is. It's like ice. I bet that water is really cold. Yep, I bet it is. I bet it is. And there's the United States. Hello, Americans. They have a U.S. flag over there. Oh. Birds cold. Want to go on the beach? They have a beach over here. It's got a lot of wood on it. But this is pretty in the summertime. Anyway, I love traveling. I love adventures. I love going places. It's kind of like the Lord prepared me. You know, why I'm doing what I'm doing all along. You know, since I was a kid, I used to love to travel. And uh, I've been to all 50 states in the United States. I've been to Canada. I have been to um, Israel. I have been to um, Bermuda. So I don't get splashed. And uh, I'm sure the summertime would be a lot better here. I'm a chili right now. My hands are really cold. Um, anyway, it's been cool. It's been great to watch the Lord uh, grow this. I remember Andrew Womack, if you remember who he is, he had uh, prophesied over me in Chicago. The Lord told me to go up to him and he'd have a word. And uh, the Lord told him that I'd be you know, setting up a worldwide ministry. And he said I could do it one of two ways. I could either do it the easy way or the hard way. He said the easy way to join join an existing ministry like Andrew Womax and then leverage that into the worldwide ministry. He said the hard way would be doing it all by myself. And uh, But he said it would be a lot more rewarding if I did it the hard way. So I'm like, all right, I'm doing it the hard way. Because I grew up on a farm and I learned that if you're going to do something right, it may be hard, but it's going to be worth it in the end. So anyway... I thank God for raising up people like you guys around the world that uh, are no names like me who are then being used by the Lord to help those to get set free. So my German accent just came out, but I have no German accent. Are you crazy? Come on. It was the Hogan the Heroes episode. That's what got me on my German accent. I learned everything I learned from uh, about Germans from Hogan's Heroes. I was thinking, my goodness how simple those simpletons are over in Germany. You know, they let Hogan and the whole crew kind of run the whole show there. They could go in and out of the, uh, the uh, prison anytime they wanted to. It's like, oh my gosh, Sergeant Schultz, he's a just crazy guy, you know. So, how funny is that? However many you got, how, how, how many of you guys ever watched uh, Hogan's Heroes? <laughs> Bob Crane, unfortunately, got killed in, in real life. But, anyways, well, um, again, for the old of you just joining, that's the United States behind me. Say hello. Hello, U.S. That is uh, New York, I believe. Yes, that would be New York. Lewiston is like that way. And the Niagara Falls is that way. So, anyway. Um... Yes, it was a funny show. Hogan, he always had the women. All the girls loved Hogan. And then there's Richard Dawson, who would later kiss all the girls on his uh, show, um, uh, his uh, game show. And then LeBeau, the French-American, the short guy. Anyways... 
Yes, I'm tangenting now. Maybe I'll walk you down here and see how far this goes, because I like adventures. Let's see, there's a seagull. How do seagulls stay warm? That's what I want to know when it's like 30 below. Burr. It's like a fort over there. Let's see how far we can walk on here. Brr. Family Feud, that's what it was. Family Feud's with Richard Dawson. Used to kiss the girls. I can't believe he did that. Shouldn't have done that. Burr. Ugh, so cold. There's some nice big houses over here. Maybe I'll let you take a look at. Oh my gosh, it's so cold. Can't wait to get in my car and turn the heat on. So there's Lake Ontario. That's a big lake. It is a big house. I can't go any further. Park boundary. No public access. Burn. All right, I think I'll let you guys go so I can warm up. So remember, why do you do what you do? And what voices are you hearing? Say goodbye. Goodbye, United States. See you later. Staying in Canada for a little longer. Hey, look, they have a Canadian flag as my fingers are turning red. Burr. I can barely move them. All right, we'll see you later. Bye-bye, love ya.